So what we're going to see, and this is being hidden from the public, the banking system, first of all, it operates in a perpetual vacuum. It's absolutely insolvent. The entire financial system operates in a black hole, which can never be filled. Henceforth, why? Every mechanism that you could think about, dream about, or even have a nightmare over is going to be utilized to pull cash into the now from the future. The debt-based system is a curse upon the world. People need to get their cash out of the smaller institutions. I've been telling people this since before it started, when the regional banks started having problems, I don't know, over a year ago, I was telling people, these institutions have a problem. No loans, no deposits, no deals. Now, the big institutions have the same issue, including Bank of America here. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway reached a remarkable milestone on Wednesday, becoming the first non-technology company in the U.S. to achieve a $1 trillion market capitalization. Buffett made headlines once again by cutting his stake in Bank of America with a share sale valued at approximately $845 million, according to a regulatory filing released on Friday. During this selling spree, Bank of America's stock has dropped by more than 9%, although it remains up around 18% year-to-date, lagging behind the larger gains of rivals Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Citigroup. Gregory Manorino, founder of TradersChoice.net, and a financial strategist, has long warned of potential issues at Bank of America. He believes the bank, along with other major Wall Street institutions, is being set up as a fall guy in the event of a financial collapse. Manorino argues that central banks are intentionally dismantling the current economic system to create a new one, and they will need a scapegoat for the inevitable fallout. The recent moves are notable because of Buffett's long history with the bank. He injected $5 billion into Bank of America in 2011, as the lender struggled to overcome the wreckage of the subprime housing meltdown that caused the 2008 and 2009 financial crisis. The timing of Buffett's sale coincides with a period of market volatility and regulatory changes impacting the banking sector. Manorino advises avoiding Bank of America like the plague and emphasizes the need for people to withdraw their funds from smaller institutions as well. According to Manorino, as the system deconstructs, power will be consolidated into fewer and fewer hands, with the financial system operating in a perpetual vacuum that is ultimately insolvent. He warns that the entire financial system is a black hole that can never be filled. Join us as we dive into the video for a deeper look. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to stay informed about our latest updates. Bank of America has got problems, and I, I've been telling, I've been, I've been warning about this for years. I think literally for years, probably over the last two, where I said, if you look at the Wall Street banks, look, they got to set up a fall guy here. I believe this with all I got. They have to, the system. People need to have. Uh, an entity to blame. What they're doing here, okay, obviously this deconstruction of the system, they need a scapegoat. It can't be that it's central banks that are bringing the world to their knees. You're not going to hear any presidential candidate talk about this. They can't point their finger at the Federal Reserve. It's a blame game. It's just the way it is. The Federal Reserve, these guys, you know, they're on the side of angels, okay? So they're, they're helping us. They want to get us out of inflation, which they could have ended in a nanosecond if you want to talk about that. The real way they could have gotten rid of inflation, but it would never happen. But anyway, so with, 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 with this whole thing with Bank of America, I believe that they're being set up as the fall guy for, there's going to be an event. They have to point to it, whether it's going to be another scamdemic. I believe something hideous. They're going to spring. Cause last time that, you know, the face diapers and all that stuff wasn't enough. Didn't create enough fear. Imagine a disease process where there were marks on the body. I just poked myself in the eye <laughs> where, um, you know, people would run to the doctor, in my opinion, and get that bioweapon pushed into themselves. And they, uh, you know, because the fear, they make people afraid people are going to run. That's what they want to do. They want to create control. Anyway, but besides that, so an event is going to occur, has to happen, whether it's going to be a disease process, multiple disease processes, maybe a war, expanding war. I have no idea. A combination of something uh, where they're going to point to as the system comes down so they can say, hey, listen, we've got a solution for you. Um, and, of course, the central banks are more than, going to be more than happy. To say, hey, you know what? We have a, they already have a solution here. They're destroying their own system. They're betting against their own system by hoarding gold, central banks, but they want us to participate. They don't want you in gold. They don't want me in gold. 
No, no, no. They want you and me and the dollar or the euro or whatever central bank you're unfortunately forced to exist under at this particular time. But Bank of America, I think, is a is is going to be the fall guy. They're going to they have to do this. They did it yeah. last time. They did the same thing during the meltdown of 08. It's it's a repeat performance. Right. Lehman Brothers, uh, uh, Bear, Bear Stearns here. Now it appears to me it's going to be Bank of America. So he has to do this now. So we can say, hold on a minute. Uh, no, I didn't have any full knowledge that this was being set up. I urge people, look at Bank of America's per performance as to its peers. You'll see what I'm talking about here. This this bank is underperforming. There's a reason for that. I think more, more people like Warren Buffett are going to be pulling their cash out of this institution. I say avoid it like the plague. Um, do what they do. These people like Warren Buffett, they have an insight that you and I, don't. Let's be honest, right? You you and I can sit here and speculate and we can try to make sense of what's going on here. But this is what's happening. And uh, it's just too clear to me. So, But, but the solutions are, are in our freaking face. We know what banks to avoid. First of all, people need to get their cash out of the smaller institutions. I've been telling people this since before it started, when the regional banks started having problems, I don't know, over a year ago, I was telling people, these institutions have a problem. No loans, no deposits, no deals. Now, the big institutions have the same issue, including Bank of America here. But they have the big institutions have the main line to the Federal Reserve. What they're doing here as they deconstruct the system is consolidate power in fewer and fewer hands. Should make sense to people what I'm saying. So what we're going to see, and this is being hidden from the public, the banking system, first of all, it operates in a perpetual vacuum. It's absolutely insolvent. The entire financial system operates in a black hole, which can never be filled. Henceforth, why? Every mechanism that you could think about, dream about, or even have a nightmare over is going to be utilized to pull cash into the now from the future. The debt-based system is a curse upon the world, run by the central banks, and we're forced to participate in, in it. Meanwhile, they're betting against it, these central banks themselves. Despite widespread predictions of a recession in 2023, the expected economic downturn never occurred. Inflation peaked in the fall of 2022, and has steadily declined since then. As of July 2024, the annual inflation rate in the United States stood at 2.9%. Similarly, an economic outlook by J.P. Morgan suggests that real GDP growth in 2024 is likely to fluctuate between slight expansion and contraction. However, consumer spending, as measured by personal consumption expenditures, PCE, appears to have reached its lowest point. Data from the Congressional Budget Office, CBO, indicates that spending is growing at a rate of about 1.1% this year, a significant decrease from the 2.2% growth rate seen in 2023. Despite claims that the U.S. economy is thriving, Manorino argues that we are being led down a path toward a new two-tier society. He points out that under the last three U.S. presidents, more billionaires and millionaires have been created than ever before, while the middle class has been drained of its resources and pushed toward the lower economic rung. Time to watch the video and uncover more insights. Well, what they're trying to do here, look, I believe we're moving into a whole entire new system. This new, this system that we're in must be deconstructed. It must be deconstructed. And that's, this has been going on for quite a while now. Part of that is creating dependency on the system. They are creating dependency on the current system that they themselves are betting against. What they don't want a three tier society anymore. What they're looking to build worldwide is a neo feudal system. Extreme haves, extreme have nots. They want a slave class down here that's going to work for nothing or maybe actually be slaves yet again here. This three tier society is a relatively new thing. It's only a couple hundred years old. Before that, people would lived under the rulership of kings and queens. Today, you know, we're supposed to be a, this, this nation here, the United States, specifically, um, try to pull away from that feudal system being ruled underneath a king. Uh, and, and, but we're being pushed back. They don't want it. They, they, they don't want this right now. Uh, we, the people, unfortunately, of the world, um, have lost the ability or maybe the understanding that we are supposed to be able to govern ourselves instead. It's that, that, that whole thing has been swept away. People have no idea. They think that it's the, that some other person is going to have their best interest in mind. You got to be freaking kidding me. Ain't the truth. Um, but that's what they're doing here. This is a move to, I can't even define what we're going into, but it's some type of a neo feudal system, extreme haves and extreme have nots here. And the more, and that's another thing. 
That's another reason why I don't believe they're done. I think that central banks are in their final phase here. I really do. And that's where we're going to see an accelerated uh, currency devaluation and central banks right now instituting emergency monetary policy. Meanwhile, we're supposed to be doing great. Our economy is the envy of the world. You remember that out of the mouth of Biden recently? Now our economy is literally the envy of the world. What they're doing here is, again, leading us down that pathway, unfortunately. And um, and that's what they're doing here. They, they really want to foster a, a, a two a new two tier society, and I think we're getting there right now. Do you realize people don't have any idea that under the last three presidents here in the United States, we've seen the one and two percenters, we've seen more billionaires and millionaires being created in the last three years than ever in in, in history. How does that work? And while the, everyone else is suffering here, the system is designed right now and being pushed into a way to remodel it, to reshape it, to deconstruct, lead to a new one here. So the one and two percenters own it all. They And not just own it all, again, are the ones who they are benefiting from the system. Well, everyone else pays for it. It's always the middle class. The middle class has been sucked dry. They don't have much left. And people are being pushed to the lower rung. I told people this was going to happen years ago. And it's happening right now to a very accelerated degree. And I think it's going to get worse moving forward. As of August 2024, the Federal Reserve's interest rates are at historically high levels, ranging between 5.25% to 5.50%, marking the highest point in 23 years. This elevated rate has been maintained since the beginning of 2024, following a series of 11 rapid rate hikes implemented throughout 2022 and 2023 to combat inflation. On the other hand, Warren Buffett's recent sale of Bank of America stock aligns with a period of market volatility that has placed pressure on the banking sector. This strategic reduction in holdings, which coincides with significant fluctuations in the market, could be interpreted as an attempt to capitalize on recent price gains or to reallocate resources to potentially more lucrative opportunities. This move reflects Buffett's adaptive investment strategy and his ongoing effort to optimize his portfolio in response to changing market conditions. How are you preparing for possible future economic shifts or crises? What strategies are you employing? Share your feedback in the comments below. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to keep up with our latest updates. We appreciate you being a part of this journey.